Talking about troubleshooting, obviously there's there's kind of two situations, right? You have something that you were hoping would happen that didn't happen at all, or you have something that didn't happen that you were hoping would happen, right? Um, so that's kind of kind of obvious, uh, but we're going to kind of run through probably a few more obvious things, and then we'll get into the to the meat of it. So uh, as far as troubleshooting, we have three basic steps. Uh, obviously, you want to, well, I say obviously, a lot of people skip steps. Um, so, <laughs> first you want to kind of document what's going on, right? Uh, and then, once you have, uh, you know, some sort of idea of, you know, this is, this is what's happening and this is the documentation to kind of back that up, uh, then you go into the diagnosis phase. Um, so just like you don't want to have a doctor just uh, diagnose you without really understanding your symptoms, uh, you probably shouldn't uh, try to diagnose a, a WordPress or website problem until you have uh, a clear idea of what's actually happening. And then of course you've got to figure out once you diagnose the issue, what do we do next? So we'll try to address all of these things. Um, so again, like I said, we have what are the symptoms, what is the cause, and then what do we do about it, right? Um, so there's a few things that kind of go into documenting an issue. Um, and so, yeah, normally we think, you know, I, I run through this issue, I know in my head what's going on, I don't necessarily need to write anything down. Um, not always true. Uh, so what we want to do is take note of a few essential details before we get started. Uh, so one of uh, one of those is well, these are the steps, right? Uh, so you want to write down what are the steps that took to reproduce the issue, what was it that actually um, happened, and then what was it you expected to happen, right? So there's obviously that difference of you know, what you want to have happen and what actually happened. Um, but the reproduction steps are important because uh, you'll see in a little bit that there's there's some loopholes there. Um, so this is my uh, Vini Vini Vici of uh, debugging. Uh, I did, I saw, I expected, so if you can remember that, that's like the three key things I like to think about when I'm trying to document uh, an issue. Um, but then you want to kind of look at the contextual details, right? So you've got three basic things there, and then we're going to look a little bit at uh, things like workarounds, right? So well, if, if this is what you did, is there another way to replicate the issue? Uh, you know, so that could be a, a clue as to what's going on. Uh, and when was it that the problem actually occurred? It may not seem like an important detail, um, but as you get into it, it may become a very important detail. So for example, oh yeah, I installed that plugin, or, uh, you know, WordPress update happened, or <laughs> something like that, right? Uh, so important to know the timing of that because um, you may get a weekend and still have the problem and then realize that maybe it's correlated to this thing and if you know exactly, if you noted when that happened, it can be helpful. Uh, so, so yeah, recent changes, things like WordPress updates, uh, any kind of configuration updates or things like that um, can make a difference. Pay attention to software versions. Um, so if you're 
Uh, not familiar, if you go into WordPress, there's the tools section. I don't think, uh, it used to be there was nothing there, so no one really went into the tools section. Um, but now they're putting more and more things there. Uh, that's where your site health check uh, is. So you can go and check there. Matter of fact, debug step number one, uh, sometimes your website just tells you what's wrong. Uh, so check that. <laughs> and then um, it has a, a button you can click and it will snag all of the versions of things. So if you needed to paste it into a support ticket or something like that, uh, it makes it really easy. Uh, and then being aware of environmental issues. Uh, so was there some sort of change on the hosting side? Um, unfortunately, not all hosts will tell you this. Um, another host, not Bluehost, to be unnamed. Um, I, was, I was working on a website one time, and I had built the site, it was live, I hadn't touched it in months. And then all of a sudden one day, just white screen, nothing. Um, so I went in and started trying to figure it out. It took me a couple hours, but I figured it out. There's this one line of code that was the issue, and I found, um, well, I asked specifically the, the host if they had made a particular type of update. They said no. Um, and then I discovered that, yes, indeed, it was related to this thing, and then I asked them again, and they said yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so environmental issues. Um, and then, you know, what are the error messages and things that you see popping up? Uh, you may not see them popping up, um, so we'll, sh we'll talk a little bit about, about that. And then a screen capture or some sort of, uh, some sort of video uh, as well is helpful, uh, just to, to remember exactly what happened. So yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, and some of these pictures are probably hard to see from back there, but um, we have the site health tool, right? So like I said, you might actually go in here and your website will just tell you, oh yeah, this thing is broken or you know, you're know you missing these PHP extensions, that's probably why you have these issues. Um, so. Trying to address some of those things first uh, could be helpful, um, but maybe not always specific to your issue, but it could be a, a helpful clue at least. And then there's another tool, um, and this isn't the only tool like it, there's other ones, but Stream is a really great tool because there's certain pieces of information that WordPress can give you by default from the uh, site health tool, and there's certain pieces of information you can glean, but there's just certain information that if you're not paying attention and time goes by, you'll never get that information. Um, so a tool like Stream will tell you, oh yeah, this uh, update happened, or this person edited this post, or they changed some setting in the customizer. Um, so especially when you have multiple people working on a website, it's important to know these things because you'll see it broken and you know you didn't do anything. And then if you look and see, oh, it broke here, this is the last person who touched it, let me talk to them. Uh, and then you get a better idea of what's going on. Is that a plugin? Yeah, this that is a plugin. Free, 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 plugin. free plugin. So yeah, so this is one of the tools I would just say, go ahead and install it because you, you can't retroactively get that information. Mm -hmm. So it has to be running and active to collect it. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a, a collection of information, right? So you, you know what you did to reproduce the issue, Right. The site health tool has all that info you can grab, and then you have the stream tool, which will have some more information. Uh, and then you kind of go into the diagnosing stage. So, this is my big word of warning. Uh, always, always, always have a backup of your site before you go changing stuff. Um, and you can also, if you have the ability, you create a staging site and do your testing there. That's probably the best way to do it. Um, but at a minimum, just make sure you have a recent backup of the site. Um, and of course, if the issue that is your issue is a completely broken site, you should have backups anyway before that. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is my uh, matrix for troubleshooting. So this is the tool that hopefully you'll find helpful. Um, so we have. Uh, basically a couple of things, right? So we have our issue source here, um, and then we have our issue types across the top there. Um, so just two things, a little simpler than clues, right? No, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, I don't know what, our, our rooms and weapons maybe? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so the idea here is you can rule out 
a particular uh, source. And if issues isolated to a specific page or a section of the site and is not a problem in some other pages or sections, then it's more likely a data issue than say like a event plugin test issue or something. <clears throat> so then there's security. Um, so we can have security issues we don't notice, but then we also really don't realize we have a problem. Uh, so typically if you have a security issue, the way that you notice it is uh, your site has obviously been hacked. Uh, <laughs> so those are usually pretty easy to identify. Um, and then we have the performance issue. So I think most people understand performance. If your site is really slow, takes 30 seconds to load, or even just 10 seconds, uh, you know, that's, that's a problem. Um, and a number of things can happen because of that. And then we have the in environmental issues. So as a general rule, if you were able to rule out all the other types of issues, chances are you have an environmental issue. Something happened on the hosting side, something, in the configuration of the, the site itself behind the scenes at the base level, uh, something's off. So, so that kind of covers the top half uh, or the top portion of that matrix. Now we're going to kind of go down the side and take a look at all the different potential sources that could be a cause of that. So uh, the first one is plugins. And plugin, uh, by the way, we're going through these in the order that they are most likely to be the problem. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, plugins are probably the most likely thing. So, uh, and, and we're going to go through all the steps that you need to take to ensure that uh, you've been able to identify what the actual source is. So, uh, so the things you want to do here are you want to deactivate all the plugins. And again, this is why you want to have a backup of your site or do this on a staging site because sometimes. Uh, it shouldn't be true that turning something off and then back on, it should still work the same, but that is not always the case. Um, usually is, but not always. Um, so turning all of those things off and then seeing if the problem still exists. Now obviously if your problem is related to the functionality that a particular plugin provides, you can't turn that plugin off because you can't test it again, right? So if, for example, we had an event plugin that was coding an issue and uh, you deactivate everything else and you still have the problem and it's just core WordPress and then the plugin, um, it's very likely that the plugin is the issue. Uh, but it's also kind of hard to turn it off and know <laughs> no for sure. Uh, so uh, another fun tool, uh, I've initially had really good success with this tool. I have to give the caveat that recently I've tried this a few times and the plugin hasn't worked exactly the way I expected, but they have a plugin. It's a pretty cool idea. Uh, it's called Plugin Detective, and so you can install it, and it will it will go through the process of turning certain plugins on or off, and it uh, it does it in a in a faster way than if you were to just turn them all off and have to go through one by one. Turn it on, go to the page. Does it work? Turn it on, go to the page. Does it work? Um, this will load up the page. And then it will automatically turn stuff on and off and just reload the page for you and say, is it broken? You just said yes or no. And then at the end, it'll tell you this is a problem or none of these plugins are a problem. Uh, so it's a quick way to kind of run that one down if it works. So then we have the theme. So the easiest way to test if you have a theme issue is to switch to the default WordPress theme, which could, I mean, obviously there's a lot of default WordPress themes at this point. Uh, any default WordPress theme will work. Um, again, the caveat there is, if your theme does everything under the sun, um, and then you switch away from it, and it, <laughs> it was associated with some of that functionality, then, then who knows, right? Like, it, it's probably the theme, because of the fact that they provide all that functionality, but um, my recommendation is just to find a theme that just does what a theme should do, and then use plugins for everything else. Don't try to get a theme that does 40,000 things and because it's a nightmare to try to move away from that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so then we have caching, right? Caching is another one that catches people off guard a lot. Um, so this is where you go to load up a page and 
and or, or I, usually what happens is someone goes in to edit a page, and then they're looking at it and they're logged in, and everything looks great, and then they turn their computer off, and they go to their friend and they're like, hey, look at this new thing I made. And their friend pulls it up on their computer and it doesn't look anything like what they just did, right? Uh, so there's a difference between being logged in and seeing it, and being logged out and seeing it, or seeing it in a totally different browser or a totally different computer. Um, so that's kind of your indicator that you have some sort of caching issue. Is if you just clear the cache, or even better, if your cache had properly cleared itself when you made the change, then everyone on the site would be seeing the same thing. Um, so generally, if you can log out or log in and get it to behave differently, or if you can look at it on a different device or browser and it behaves differently, then it's a caching issue. <coughs> and then again, so we have, and this is why data, like I said, is a little tricky. Uh, we have data as a source, but also as an issue type. Um, so uh, again, can you correlate the data with a particular setting in WordPress uh, or some sort of data entity? Um, try to uh, change the setting, uh, right? So if you think that it could be related to a particular uh, particular thing, then you know just mess around the settings, right? <laughs> uh, test those out. Uh, try. So another <laughs> interesting problem. I don't think people have as big a problem with it now. Uh, but I remember plenty of times like I would copy something and then paste it onto the website, and then stuff would get really weird, right? Like you get weird characters or just like things would not show up uh, or random stuff like that. Uh, this is how I found out about uh, something called Gremlins, which are like, they have apparently something called zero byte characters, which are characters you do not see, um, but they wreak havoc. Hence the name Gremlins. Um, so, <laughs> if you, if you, particularly if you've copy pasted something, this could be a potential issue. Um, so I found that one of the easier ways of dealing with it is just to delete the content and type it out by hand. And if that works, then that could be what you were dealing with. Just a question: When you're talking about data, what data are you talking about? Um, so, well, this, I'm trying to be slightly vague because. It could be anything okay. <laughs> specific to your site. Um, but so like, I like the example of events, right? Like let's say you have an event and maybe like, I don't know, a map's not showing up. Well, you know, it's a little, like I said, data can be a little okay. tricky. Okay. But if you think about it, right, like take some time and say, okay, well, why would maps not be showing up? It could be the, the functionality of the events plugin or the map plugin or whatever is not working, but it could also be, oh, the address that I put in couldn't be mapped to an actual geolocation, an actual longitude and latitude, and so it can't figure out where to put things, and it thinks that there's no places to show, so it doesn't show the map or something like that, right? So, yeah, kind of a vague answer, but... No, that's helpful, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we have third-party integration. So this is, um, for example, having uh, you know maybe your Twitter feed or some Facebook stuff that shows on a sidebar somewhere uh, or in a footer. Um, you know, if if all that just stops working, then the first thing you should check is is Twitter down, is Facebook still up? You know, um, or there, yeah, random, random things like that. Um, so there's a lot of times you can check that pretty easily. Just go into status pages for a particular service, um, and then you know if there's sometimes there's more specific integrations where you all you can do is call the company. But uh, don't assume that it's the plugin until after you figure out it's not the service itself. And then we have uh, the server as a potential source. So if, as I gave the example earlier, if the site went down and no one, literally no one, had touched the site <laughs> in a month, um, you know, you can't really attribute it to anything else. 99% of the time that I've found it is the server or the environment, hosting environment itself. <clears throat> 
And then, of course, least likely, but still a possibility, is there could be a problem with WordPress itself. So in this scenario, we do have to we've kind of narrowed those things down, right? So we've ruled out, oh, it's not a, it's not a plug-in or a data issue or a whatever. Uh, you know, it's not a caching issue. So usually we can narrow it down. Maybe you'll have a couple of columns or rows that are potentials, you know, if you're not really sure. Um, and then we can, we can go from there. So for plugins, uh, if you identify that's where the issue is, the first thing I do is I try to reach out to the plugin author and say, hey, this very specific thing is broken. Here are my reproduction steps. Here's my screenshots. Here's the versions of things I'm using. Um, they're gonna, it saves, especially on the free forums when it takes like three days to get the response. Um, <laughs> It, it can be very helpful just to uh, have all that information. Now, granted, some of that information, maybe you don't want to post, post on a public forum, uh, but there are ways you can paste that information now um, on the forum, specifically as like a private note for the uh, plugin developer or something like that. Um, just know that if you're doing it on for a free plugin, sometimes the authors don't actually provide support in, uh, at all on there. Um, so there's that. But that's the first step. Other option is you can always use a different plugin, unless, of course, this is one of two plugins and you chose this one because that one other one was no good. So uh, then you're kind of in a, in a catch 22 there. But, um, but yeah, usually uh, there's, there's some alternative that you can deal with. Uh, of course, the third course of option, action, if those two don't work, is hire a developer, fix the plugin, and then ideally have that uh, developer contribute that back to the plugin author uh, and go from there. Um, and, I'll, and I'll say this too, uh, it's not uncommon to have two plugins that just because you're using both of those two specific plugins, they cause it an issue, right? So you could be turning plugins off and on and then problem shows up, but it only shows up because you have this plugin and this plugin active. So just be aware there could be a correlation between that. Um, so for example, like I had a Gravity Forms, uh, uh, what is it, one of the Gravity Wiz, uh, Gravity Perks extensions combined with like uh, custom Gravity Forms plugin somebody else wrote. And we're trying to get them to work together to do a special like address autocomplete functionality. and. Uh, so you type in the address and it would pull from Google, but then you would click it and it was supposed to pre-fill the fields, but it didn't pre-fill one of the fields just because the way that this other plugin worked conflicted with the way this one worked. Um, so I went to the one author and they said, oh yeah, it'll never work because of the way this other thing works. And then I went to these people and they're like, we wrote you some code, you can just paste it in your site and it'll work for both. Um, so there's always, always a, a way to kind of, when you have two plugins, Sometimes you get this plugin author blames the other one and that one blames the other one, and that gets to be a weird situation, but uh, ideally, um, in most cases, I've found that you can, you can get, get something to happen. Uh, so it's the same situation with a the theme, uh, except this time you can only run one theme at a time, so it's gonna be a single author that you're talking about. And then we have caching. Um, so, well, the, the first course of action to verify uh, is to flush the cache. I don't consider flushing the cache a permanent solution, uh, but it's also not, um, so usually if you have caching, it's cached for a certain period of time. And if you happen to just notice that it hasn't refreshed within this time frame, it could just be that the type of change that you made didn't automatically clear the cache for whatever reason. So, Is this a cache on my website? Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we have a whole other caching talk. It's a whole other hour, so we don't have time for that one. But, um, there's, there are different types and levels of caching. Okay. Uh, so typically, uh, most people will install some sort of plugin that does caching. And so when they do that, uh, they'll get... Website caching. Uh, yeah, yeah, so they'll get most likely page caching is what we're talking about now. Okay. Um, but there's also browser caching, which is 
not something you can clear. <laughs> uh, it's something that clears itself or the user goes in and clears it for themselves. Uh, so that's another popular caching. Uh, but then there's other tools out there like Cloudflare and other services that uh, get used that also have to be cleared. Uh, there's object caching and so usually <laughs> if the web host has yeah. like three or four, maybe more types of caching, they'll give you one place to go and you can flush all of them just to see if that takes care of it. Uh, but if you're constantly running into this problem, it's very likely that whatever that caching solution is, is not properly saying, when I update a post, clear the cache for that post. And that's, that's why you keep getting that problem. So it could be that you've misconfigured something in a plugin that does caching, but it also could be the host misconfigured something or something like that. So just be aware of that. <laughs> um, flushing the cache may work, uh, but it may not be the ultimate solution. And then we have <laughs> data, <laughs> just fix it. Because <laughs> at that point, uh, by the time you <clears throat> narrow it in on a data issue, you pretty much know and probably have control over that data. Uh, so you should be able to fix it. And then of course, with uh, third party integrations, um, you know, if the service is down, usually I'll just say, we'll wait it out. <laughs> um, but sometimes, um, you know, a, a service will have kind of a, uh, I don't know, chronic issue, and then you have to make that decision to switch to something else. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and then of course, with any kind of server environment issue, you should be able to reach out to your web host. If your site is hosted by some random person who says, I do hosting, uh, and isn't very responsive, you should get a real web host. Uh, <laughs> kind of like yeah. What's that? Kind of like yeah, kind of like Bluehost. Yeah. <laughs> Good out. <laughs> and then uh, if, if you have a WordPress bug, uh, then you should report it. So I probably should have a link somewhere at the end of the slides, maybe. I don't remember if I have links in here, but uh, there, are, there are places, specific places, if you just Google report a WordPress bug, it should point you in the right direction to uh, like a, a place you can do that. So yeah, so obviously this is very kind of a vague thing, uh, but I think the matrix aspect of it is the, um, the more interesting part. It's not something I've seen anywhere else. Um, is that available for us to, <laughs> to download too? Uh, yeah, so the slides, I, well, I'm trying to think the best way to share it. It's just a Google slide page. Uh, technically, I really, really need to write a blog post on this and just put this in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't done that yet. Um, but yeah, if you want to, I don't know, come up and snap a photo or something, uh, you can do that. But I'll also um, can share out the links. Uh, I guess technically you could go to wpscholar.com, go to the contact form and just say, hey, send me a link to the, to the slide deck and I can do that. <laughs> So a lot of the issue types, I guess, are pretty obvious when you look at it. But if it's a visual issue or interactive, it's like so. The one that I get stuck on is when you pull up the page and it's just a white screen. Um, yeah. How do you even start? Yeah, so if you get a white screen, so well, first of all, there's, there's usually an error message of some kind. Uh, it's just normally on a production site, showing that is a bad idea for security reasons. So that's usually hidden. So if your web hosts are, or you can set up some sort of staging site, uh, I think by default, usually the staging sites will have, will show you the error message. Okay. So if you can copy the site and then do it in staging, a lot of times you'll actually start to see those issues. If you don't, um, there is a simple, I say simple, uh, you actually do have to go into a, a PHP file. Uh, so there's that wp config file, mm -hmm. and you can add the wp debug uh, true, 
Uh, and sometimes that's set to true, but there's also another thing called WP debug display yes. to actually make sure you can still see it. And um, there's another one called the log. Yeah, and there's one WP uh, debug log. Debug so log. if you wanted to actually log those errors, you can find those on the server in a file and okay. keep track of them for you. Yeah. We'll send the errors to a file somewhere. Um, and some web hosts will even um, have like a screen in the interface where it will show errors. Yeah. Um, so there's that as well. Um, but yeah, usually once you see the error, it'll tell you the path to the file where that error is happening. And nine times out of ten, it includes the name of the plugin. <laughs> yeah, because it's in the path of the, yeah. uh, of the yeah. thing. Yeah. So the main so, issue that you're talking about, though, is that if you get a, if you're getting a white screen. WordPress might not even be running at that point. So WordPress won't be able to spit out any debug information for you. Yeah. Um, well, of course, now, the way it works, if you get an actual white screen, like you said, it, it's probably because <laughs> there's something that's happening before WordPress is fully right. loaded. But WordPress now outputs that, even in production, if it fatal errors, it'll show that your site is experiencing a critical issue or yeah. something. And it has a link to find out more information, but it also emails whoever the admin is the actual full error. Um, so that if you get an email, especially if you haven't looked at your site lately, you get an email <laughs> <laughs> that says there's an issue, um, pay close attention to the path and maybe the plugin or whatever it is that's causing it could be a theme. Um, and then of course, if if you identify it as a plugin that's a problem, uh, you will want to disable it. Uh, you could go into the file system and like rename the folder of that to turn it off, but that's kind of a complicated thing. Um, Bluehost actually has an interface where you can just go toggle things on and off, and even if the site doesn't fully load, it will still turn that thing off. Um, so that that would be one option. Um, but yeah, just making sure you can disable whatever it is that's. Yeah, Another, that, that was my thing. Is that I would. When it gets a white screen, or you know that it's a problem with this plugin, you can't even get to the WP admin to turn it off. Right. Yeah. I always just, yeah, we do that, but rename the plugin folder. Yeah. I'm like, that just doesn't seem the right way to do it, but I guess it is. <laughs> so, the, so, the, so, if you um, disable a plugin by, re say, renaming the folder, and you log in to WordPress and then go to the plugin screen, it'll then say, oh, this plugin doesn't exist. We've right. turned it off for you. Right. And so then, at that point, that plugin will never reactivate until you manually go reactivate it. Right. Um, so, just a side note, yeah, that's another thing where it can reconfigure itself. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but yeah, like renaming the entire plugins folder to something else <laughs> um, and then visiting the site and seeing how it loads. Yeah. You can do it uh, in the database too. <clears throat> yeah, 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 you can, uh, yeah, if you really know what you're doing, yeah. you can go into the database and. <laughs> Uh, there's an active plugins uh, option in there that you can essentially yes, just clear out. You can use WP CLI too, right? To yeah, usually you'll have to do like dash dash skip plugins when you do WP CLI okay. so that it doesn't actually run the plugin, so it will just run WordPress right. and deactivate whatever it is you're trying to turn off. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, it'll work. A uh, couple of things. Um, one of the ways that I get rid of gremlins and data is if I'm copying and pasting is copy it, put it in a notepad because that takes out all the formatting and then paste it into WordPress and that gets rid of a lot of things like that. And sometimes with um, integrations, I'll reload the API and that will sometimes get rid of little bugs there. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like sometimes just, yeah, reconnect or... Uh, exactly. Hey, remember me? And it goes, oh, yeah, all right, I got it. Sometimes that'll fix it. Yeah. Also, in Elementor, there's a icon that will clean out your uh, whatever you posted. Gotcha. So it kind of paste is yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that, that actually is something that I've experienced plenty of times. Elementor has kind of like its own little cache of things that it stores. So sometimes when you have a caching issue, it's not just your plugin slash host slash Cloudflare slash all these things. It's also, oh, just clear that thing in Elementor and then now it all works. Yeah. Um, this is, if you're in the, uh, for instance, uh, 
the text part and you go and you copied something in there or you've written it or it got in there somehow and you look at it there's all sorts of junk in there and you push that icon in there. Oh yeah, yeah. Out. The, the, the clear formatting. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think, I, I know the word, the old WordPress editor actually had a like button that would do yeah. Those, yeah. some Paste sort of cleanup. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's just, uh, it may actually be a carryover from that just being injected into Elementor, but, um, but yeah, that, but yeah, you have to kind of know it's there to use it, so. Yeah. I used to have a lot of caching issues, and I moved to a BTS and my site's work right now. Mm -hmm used to be on a shared server, but um, caching was the big issue. What caching plugin do you recommend that kind of is good, but not too good? I, yeah. <laughs> I, I run Elementor, and I notice when I clear, when I make a lot of changes, I clear the cache, and then I pull it up again, and it's a disaster. I know it's not a disaster for long, but initially it was a real disaster and it's like oh my god what happened to my site and it takes a while for it to reset for whatever reason i don't know gotcha. but um yeah do you have any recommendations like i use um wp cat fastest cache and i also use um all in one i'm no longer sorry i can't remember the other one there's another caching plugin in that you put so yeah so one thing i've noticed is that a lot of times, a lot of the caching issues are actually related to people using too many caching plugins. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and, and you have to understand too, and this is, again, part of that long caching talk, uh, what your host offers, what you need to fill the gap in on, uh, and so having a plugin that will do certain things, but knowing to turn this off because your web host does that, right. and their plugin or whatever handles this thing, or, you know, um, Understanding so, your hosting environment and then building on top of that. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes that's just calling and asking. So you're saying that the host might be able to provide software to do that behind the scenes and not have to worry about they, it? They, they may be doing it without you knowing, and yeah. that may be causing yeah. problems. Um, yeah, most yeah. web hosts have some sort of caching already in place. Mm -hmm. Now, what type of caching and to what extent, that will vary. Um, but as a general recommendation um, for Free plugins. I can't say that I have None a particular <laughs> caching plugin that I like a lot. Like I, I like W3 Total Cache, but it is like you have to be a wizard to, to figure it. <laughs> right. Um, but as far as like paid plugins, my favorite combination is WP Rocket and uh, Imagify, the image optimization plugin, because they work together really well. They also don't take up like a primary link in your sidebar. Um, and you can configure it, and they even have guides how to configure for Bluehost and WP Engine and GoDaddy and all these different uh, web servers. So they, so they are familiar with what the host provides and how you should configure that thing, which is a lot more than you're getting for any other prepaid. A lot of those uh, plugins aren't, aren't just doing caching, they're doing a lot of other things too that can cause problems like deferring JavaScript and all that stuff. So you have to go through a whole other configuration process with that caching plugin, you know? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, so there's caching, and then there's what I call performance optimization, optimization right. which is non-caching things that happen. Um, so yeah, so if you got to start messing around with like how JavaScript loads and all this kind of stuff, it may work really, really well, and it could also break horribly. Yeah. Um, and so what you're describing is looking horrible could be related to like your CSS, uh, you know, something got mangled or... Uh, I think Rocket has like a safe mode. Yeah, yeah, so like, if you if you choose, like, they, yeah, there's certain things that are always safer to use and certain things are a little more risky. So like, usually it's safe to combine CSS. It's more risky to combine JavaScript. Uh, it's also more risky to uh, do what they call critical CSS, which is the CSS, that's, or the styling that's just for the top part of the page before you start to scroll. Um, and then they put all the other stuff and have it load later. Well, if that's not properly configured, then it will just look atrocious. And uh, and then if you don't know how to like reconfigure that, then 
it could be a mess. So if you just don't use that feature, yeah. uh, it could impact your, your Google web scores and stuff like that. Um, right. So probably, you know, something to have a professional come in and actually do it right. But, uh, and I've noticed um, some plugins that aren't specifically for cache, has caching in it. Yeah. But, and they also have WP. Uh, yeah, and I like WP Optimize, yeah, but I no. don't use the caching feature. I only use it for database optimization, and then I delete it. <laughs> um, and that's a whole other job for database optimization. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, question. Yeah. Nope. Does, um, if you run site help, that's uh, at least what I do that. I get a, a note that says, try this for caching. You need this type of caching. But does it normally look at caching problems uh, on the site help? Yeah, so WordPress itself will have specific checks. And I think right now the one related to caching is the, what they call the persistent object cache. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so not all web hosts provide it. Um, so sometimes, yeah, and usually it is something that your web host will have to provide. I think W3 Total Cache gives you like an alternative to object caching that you can just like use, but uh, yeah, otherwise it's, it's pretty much just a web hosting tool. Um, Is that worth changing to what they say? Um, so it can make a big difference. So the, the, pl the times where that would make more of an impact is if you have an e-commerce site or if um, you have like a lot of people working in the WordPress admin area. Um, because it's, it, if you have page caching and all these different things on the front end of your website, everything will probably load. It, it wouldn't even be making those requests to the database for the information. Yeah. But when you're in the admin, usually nothing's cached in there. So if you've got, I don't know, uh, say you run in a big new site, you got 100 editors, you know, they're all in there every day working, which is very rare. Uh, which is why I say e-commerce is the probably the most common use case for where you really want to have that uh, because technically when people are buying things um, you're not really caching everything because you don't want to show other people's carts to other people because you cached it. <laughs> um, so that's where uh, the cache would come in handy. I don't even know what what time it is, or how much time we have left here? 13 minutes. 13 minutes, okay. Let's go to the next session. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay, like a 15 minute break. Are we? Awesome. Well, if you have questions or issues, feel free to swing by the Blue Host booth. I'll, where are the booths? Uh, so if you go to the auditorium,